Ms. Denise Poir. Sirs, I rise in support of the Children and Young Persons Amendment Bill, or the CYPA Bill. This is an important bill because it sets the framework to better provide for the welfare, care, protection and rehabilitation of children and young persons, or CYPs, at risk in our midst. I draw my suggestions from my co-laborers, volunteers and my experience serving the CYPs in my constituency, district and in the special needs sector. I have three areas to the Ministry to consider further strengthening in order to reap better outcomes. First, to strengthen the coordination and integration of care for these children. Second, to strengthen the voice of the children and young persons. And third, to strengthen the for foster parents scheme. First, strengthening the coordination and integration of care. Despite the immense efforts by volunteers and agency staff, I found the outcomes for these children at risk and young persons at risk often still less than ideal. It is definitely not for lack of heart and hands, because I know how much each volunteer and staff cares and puts in. These partners have told me, these partners on the ground have told me the following needs that if better addressed would surely improve the life outcomes for the young people they care for. These needs are, one, the need for a safe environment where children feel secure, where they can learn and even rest without a constant heightened feeling of fear, anxiety and disruption. Such an environment can be found in both mainstream and special schools, but much depends on the kindness of the adults in charge. In the mainstream first Toapayo, for instance, in the mainstream first Toapayo primary school, there is a program called Home at School to provide such a safe environment for after school. In the special school path like where I volunteer, the Ohana after school program offers such a safe setting. The second need is for a need for constant and familiar adult supervision, which can come in the form of teachers, youth workers, social workers or foster parents. One of the key challenges to track and address, for instance, is the turnover of such adult supervisors in the lives of these children and young persons, causing further disruptions in their lives. The third is the need for better and constant access to needed community and health care, including mental health care services. And fourthly, but most of all, most important of all, the need for an integrated turnkey solution, properly coordinated by an appointed lead case manager, a solution integrator of sorts that all relevant parties helping the children and these young persons, the relevant parties can turn to. In many instances, the different help agencies and the staff hardly have time to meet physically, nor update regularly and communicate with each other until something happens in the life of these young persons. Each of them working within their own scope of duty and doing their very best. The youth worker taking care of the youth services for the young, the drug counsellor taking care of a, of a parent, the social service, the officers delivering financial assistance. But without an appointed solution integrator to deliver more effective case management, I fear that the lives of the children and the young persons will, will experience a spiral downwards. One young, one, uh, one young boy I know has already turned to smoking and dating at primary six after losing both parents. Another young girl I know whose mother is in remand for drug offences became worse off when there was no effective handshake between her counsellors as she transited from primary to secondary school. One student with special needs I know very well is facing transition challenges as he is preparing to leave school after special school and as his foster mother ages and experiencing uh, having cancer and that there's not uh, enough confidence amongst the, all the parties working with him that there is a good transition and handshake. Hence the need, uh, I feel there's a strong need to invest more resources to the Ministry of, uh, to MSF to strengthen the coordination and the integration of care. The second need is this to strengthen the voice of the children and young persons. Deputy Speaker, sir, I have mixed feelings as I go through the bill. On one hand, it is a comprehensive one, covering many needed gaps. On the other hand, I cannot help but feel that in our efforts to protect the child, 
if we are seeing things a lot through the lenses of the adults and not enough through the eyes of the children and young persons we're trying to help. How do we incorporate the voice of these young people whose lives we attend to shape for the better? In matters that impact them, such as the change of school, the admission into children's homes or foster homes, in identifying their adult supervisors, are there measures installed to take into account the feelings and preferences of these young persons? How can the long and onerous process of gathering evidence determination and implementation of court orders for children caught in parental disputes be improved, the process be improved, so that their feelings are considered. In the new section 68A, for instance, that authorizes the use of mechanical restraint, such as handcuffs or leg braces on a child or young person, how do we ensure that the least damage is done on them? Are affected children and young persons involved in the numerous decisions made for them incorporated in this bill? I therefore seek clarification from the Ministry on how the voice of these young persons can be sought and strengthened in this bill. Third, on strengthening the foster parents scheme. I'm very pleased that foster parents are officially added uh, in this bill as key partners to support children and young persons in need of protection and rehabilitation. Foster parents, if properly selected and trained, provide a more natural and desirable setting, setting than a group home for these young people. I have studied the Ministry's fostering scheme and found it to be useful and structured. I have a few suggestions for Ministry to consider to strengthen this important scheme. One, to cast the net wider to attract more suitable and interested foreign, uh, foster parent candidates. To cast the net wider to attract more suitable and interested foster parent candidates. Two, to involve them more in the case management process so as to better integrate the care across schools, the foster home and other areas. And three, to put in more resources to train to and skill and support the foster parents so that they can more effectively care for their charges, more so if the children have special needs that require specialised knowledge. In conclusion, sir, the CYPA is an important bill and is overdue. In its implementation, there is a need to especially strengthen the coordination in and integration of care to ensure that children and young persons receive the better outcomes they deserve. The mission of ensuring a better life for them, however, cannot be left only to government and social service agencies. Those of us in the rest of society whether as neighbours or relatives or volunteers, must join in the efforts to support this effort. And so I strongly support the bill.